This week marks 35 years since the disappearance of Susie Lamplew. Her parents, Paul and Diana, both of whom I remember, set up the Lamplew Trust in 1986 to ensure personal safety was a public priority and the Trust has been doing its vital work ever since. I've been very pleased to work alongside the Trust during Stalking Awareness Week for a number of years, appearing on their podcast to talk about the impact of the pandemic on the experiences of stalking and uh, about helping victims to navigate the criminal justice system. I was very fortunate to receive the Susie Lamplew Trust Safer Workplace Award for work done when I was the Police and Crime Commissioner in Northumbria. So we've been close for some time and I want that to continue uh, together. Stalking is still not fully understood. It is sometimes difficult to convince, for instance, police that sending flowers or something that's not inherently threatening is actually very menacing. Indeed, they tend to look for something that looks dangerous or a threat of violence, not understanding that a course of conduct when someone's obsessed can inflame immediately, very, very quickly into a very real, sometimes life-threatening danger. The other point I think that I just want to make from some experience I had in Newcastle when I was the PCC is that every officer must do a risk assessment in a thorough way when called to a stalking incident, whatever the individual calls it, if they recognise it as stalking. And that's excellent. And nobody more than me as victims commissioner wants the victim's voice to be in there. But do not let what the victim thinks is the level of danger influence the outcome of the risk assessment. They will know particular things that the culprit can taunt them with, which will hurt them very much. But they're not experts in the threat from stalking. If on a risk assessment, the threat in the risk assessment is higher than that put to you by the complainant who may want to just say, I don't want to harm this person, I just want it to stop. Then the risk assessment is what matters. If on the other hand, your risk assessment as a police officer shows less risk than the complainant is talking about, then it's the complainant's level of risk assessment that matters. This is the same for people who are not in the police, but giving victims support services. And they are two things that I learned from a number of pretty awful cases that happened when I was a PCC and have happened since and come to me as the victims commissioner. The trust continues to put out those educational pieces of information to campaign, to support, to reduce the risk of violence and aggression to this day. And although this is an awful anniversary, I am very, very pleased indeed to have the trust beside us when we fight stalking and we will lend every support we can to it, as we have in the past, as it goes forward. To learn more about the Trust, visit www.susielamplew.org. 35 years right to be safe. And thank you for listening.